Hey guys, in the fast lane here. In this video, I'm going to show you how to fix a valve cover gasket and intake manifold gasket for a 2003 Cadillac CTS. Now, what happened was is this valve cover gasket pretty much blew out. And what mainly caused it was there was a crack in the PCV valve line. It had a big hole in it, so it wasn't pulling vacuum anymore. And eventually the crankcase started building a lot of pressure and it blew out the driver's side valve cover gasket first and then right after that, shortly after, once I connected the, got a new hose, reconnected it to the PCV uh, modulator, I guess they call it a module. And once I did that, all of a sudden it started transferring to the passenger side valve cover. So it was leaking all over the exhaust manifold or header, if you call it. And it was just smoking. I was losing about a quart a day. So it was really bad. If you need to purchase the items in this video, you can always find the items. It'll say shop this video underneath the video in the about me section or in the comments. I always pin it to the top comment. If you're on my website, it'll say shop this video underneath the video. As for the sockets, you're going to need yourself a T30 Torx bit, an E12, and an E10 star bit. For the E12s, we got one, two, three, four. And then on this side, we got two E10s right here. So push down on this clip right here, and we're gonna pull up. Do that to the second one also. I'm just go ahead and pull this other one up and set these aside. Now we can get to these two 10s. This one's gonna be a little tricky. Now we're going to come back here and pull all four of these vacuum lines off. We have two 10 millimeters right here. Now this one's going to be tight to get to. You're going to actually have to use a, just a regular wrench. But these two 10 on the power steering reservoir have to come off. Now we have three hose clamps. We have one here, here, and here. Remove those. Once you've loosened the hose clamps, go ahead and pull these intakes off. Now you're gonna go ahead and remove this hose clamp right here with a pair of pliers. All this is is the overflow uh, hose reservoir. It comes right to the radiator, so there shouldn't be any pressure in this at all. Once you remove that, go ahead and take this throttle positioning or actual throttle. This is how it works, electronic little foot pedal. So go ahead and unplug this. You're gonna push the two on the outside and pull out. Just set that aside. Make sure you keep this elevated because it will leak. Now we just got to disconnect this brake booster line right here. We're just going to pull and that should be it. We got a little bracket right here. We just need to pull back a little bit. Now we pretty much have everything disconnected. There's a few things in the back here. We got to disconnect like this vacuum line right here. Just follow it back and pull it off. And then pretty much that looks like that looks like it's pretty much it. So now we should be able to pretty much lift this thing up and out. Now always check for your O-rings because when you pull up they tend to come off. I'm gonna replace all these. I have new ones and in the store my shopping cart you'll have all this whole entire kit that you need to do this job. Also, there's one more vacuum line underneath the throttle body that I didn't uh, tell you guys about. It's right underneath there, so go ahead and disconnect that right on the front before you lift it. It just kind of falls off. All right, we're going to attempt to take this intake runner off without taking out this fuel rail. Now, if you need to, you can come over here, and there's a little fuel rail nipple. 
you look right there, just put your finger over that valve and push down and see how much pressure's in there. There shouldn't be much. Now I know a lot of people go in the back, in the back seat over here, and they go ahead and remove the, uh, I believe it's a relay or it's a, a power pack or something like that, that underneath the seat, and it releases the, uh, the fuel pressure so they say but I went ahead and pushed mine there's no fuel pressure pretty much when you turn it off it returns to the tank or it should so you could disconnect it right here if you want but I'm gonna see if I can't now we got right here if you look right there we have Torx head now let me look at the bit that I got it's a it's a T45 so get yourself a T45 bit and we got six of these you got one here there's gonna be one here one there, one there, one there, one there. So just look down in here and you'll be able to see them all. See right here, we got another one over here, another one, and then the back here, there's one right there. Maybe not, but I think there's five or six of them. So just look down in there, and then this whole thing should come out. We should be able to pick it up and move it over towards the battery. Just get it out of the way. There's no need to really tear this whole thing apart if we don't have to. Now you're probably thinking to yourself, when you go to pull this out, it just won't come straight up. But there's a specific way to remove this runner. And I'll show you right here. If you have a quick look, I don't know if I can get it back down. But if you look right here, there's an indention. And you need to line these bumps on the runner right with the indention. So it lets you go up and over. Just like that. Now we're out of there. It almost seems impossible, but it's not. There's one more plug we gotta remove from the injectors, and it's right back here. I don't know if I can get a good shot for you guys, but I'm gonna just disconnect it. It's just one big plug, and you pretty much just lift up the thing and pull out. So now we can take this whole thing and just set it in the front right here. So now we have some more E12 bolts. We got one, Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We got ten bolts. We're gonna go ahead and remove those. Now this video, you can do more than just the intake manifold seals and the valve cover. This is pretty much getting down to where the oil cooler is. This is where the oil cooler is located underneath this. So you'll be able to see that here in a minute also. Now that you got those ten bolts out, you can go ahead and pull it straight up. Heard something drop down in there. What we got here? Oh. Looks like we got one of those uh, bushings. These guys right here. So make sure that you don't lose these. Have a look down in there for them. Now if you have a look down in here, this is the oil cooler right here. This whole thing. It basically goes down in between the cylinders in the block. Right in the middle of the block. And basically, you disconnect this water bridge right here you take out these two banjo bolts right here where the oil goes in and out and then the whole thing pulls straight out there's uh, one two three four five six six or seven it looks like uh, E12 star bolts and you just take those out and pull that out now if you follow this stainless line right here all the way back it sits on a bracket and it's pretty much back over here kind of up under and behind the uh, power steering reservoir basically there's a E10 uh, star bit you got to take it off so you can lift this whole line and just bring it over there so you're gonna have to do that I'm not gonna be able to get that on film it's a really tight spot you also have a bracket on this uh, reservoir right here looks like another looks like an E10 it's down here on the side go ahead and remove that one all right, so on the driver's side, we got to get rid of this reservoir right here because it overlaps the valve cover. And then we got a ignition coil. If you look right there, that's the plug. We need to take that off. And then right under the plug, you can probably barely see it or not. Basically, underneath that plug, there's a star bit, and it runs to this line right here. 
So this line runs all the way down and we got to take that star bit off because it's on a bracket. It's, it's a E10 I believe and then lift it and put it over here so we can get it up over this valve cover. So I'm going to go ahead and take this bolt off right here. If you look at that bolt right there, it looks like a 12 millimeter. And then this uh, power steering reservoir will be able to move. Now on the back right here, we got the coil pack. It's like one main plug. You're just going to push down on this clip right here. Or actually, you can pry it from the front. Stick this screwdriver in there. Pop it up. And push it back and that's it for that now it looks like we got pretty much everything out of the way other than this rail right here we got to take this rail off so actually if you want you can just give it a little bend up just like that and I don't think you'll have to remove it so if you want to you can just leave that there all right first we're gonna have to go ahead and take this coil pack right here we unplugged it but we got one two E10 bolts so go ahead and take these out and then we got one, two, three, four, eight. We have eight E12 bolts. All right, we got all those out of there. And now we're gonna gently fingernail it, kind of stick under there. You don't wanna go smacking it or anything like that because it is uh, plastic. So, let's see here. We're going to have to pull this sensor right here off, this little clip. There we go. If you're going to grab it, just grab the two right here, pinch them together and slide it out. So now I get a little bit more. We got this one too. I'm just going to take these sensors, disconnect them from. There we go. And that's pretty much that. A little cheap plastic intake. <clears throat> now we can get all the wires out of the way. And oh yeah, it was leaking like crazy over here. I'll give you a shot to show you what the damage was, but it looked like it looked like this valve cover's been pulled off before and they RTV'd the crap out of it. Now if you look down in here you can see all that oil right there on the outside. Look how thick it is. Just this is what was leaking all over. If you look at the exhaust manifold you can see how soaked it is and yeah, that's what was going on. Now on the back here you have these two like pretty much end caps right here and there's one right here I'm probably blocking it, I can't really see but there's one right there and these caps right here these caps right here, right here and right here you need to put RTV on them you can pretty much see where RTV was applied in the beginning all through here that's what you gotta do so you're gonna RTV it right back in the back here right here before you put the cap in now go ahead and clean your valve cover off you can hit it with some brake cleaner it's not going to hurt it I'm probably get a little bit of slack for that but you know some of this stuff's really kicked on you got a little bit of RTV here here just make sure you get all the RTV off uh, a tip would be this thing always leaks it's a common problem and the previous guy had RTV'd it but he put the bolt underneath the flap and I had to actually break it to get it off so I'm going to re-RTV it but basically it locks in, unlock it, RTV the heck out of it, real thick. You can see how it's gooped up right here. RTV it, re-screw it back down and let it sit for about, I'd say a good 30, 40 minutes and you'll never leak again. So that's a tip right there. It's a common problem. Go ahead, RTV that, lock it in, line up the bolt hole so you can re-put the bolt on top of the flap instead of under it. Now on the back where the cam is right here, you're going to have to pull these out because they get stuck. And they're just rubber, rubber guys, just like this. Pull both of them out. You see how they RTV'd them really well? That's what you're going to have to do also. So I got that one and I got another one down here. Try not to damage the head because you don't want to nick it. There we go. First we're going to change out the 
mounting part on the intake, the base. So we got these, just grab them right here in the middle. Pick up. And then you're just going to pull them straight up. And you can go ahead and clean them out, but I already cleaned these, they're pretty good. Once you pull them, just give them a little spray with some brake cleaner. We're going to do the same thing with this. It actually has a little pull-up tab right here. Just like that. And here's our new ones. So I'm going to go ahead and spray this down real quick, and then we'll come back to install them. Now, quick tip, if you have some built-up carbon in here, or it's really caked on, uh, you can take yourself some 220 grit sandpaper, real fine grit, and you just come on in here. Now, try not to smack out the edge, because you actually don't want to mess around with the port, but you can gently rub some of that carbon off. Just be careful, you don't want to mess this lip up, because that uh, has has a flow chart rate basically from the factory so don't don't mess up the flow of it but just go in here like this and kind of sand it down to where you get the carbon out and then hit it with brake cleaner really good you don't want any of these crystals getting in your intake it'll scratch your cylinders so do this and then really thoroughly clean it with brake cleaner and also go forward and backward motion don't do swirls because you want the airflow to go straight it's all cleaned up now we're going to take the new gasket and all you do is just kind of outline it fit it like a puzzle There's that one, and now we'll do the same for the next one. If you look, you got a little tab right here, so you're going to flip it around and just follow this tab right here, and there's an indention right here, so it lines right up. Now go ahead and flip it over, and we got to do these seals, so grab your pick and start in the middle. Lift up in the middle, and then pull it out, and we're going to do the same for these ones. That's done. I got a little bit of brake cleaner in here. I'll let that dry out and then I will install the new ones. Now we take the gaskets, the new ones, and basically just kind of stick the center in first and work your way all the way around. That's it for that. Now this kit that I purchased here is a one piece kit. And if you look up parts and stuff, you can order it from my store. I'll have the one piece kits on there. It basically it comes one piece. There's a two piece kit that this side is separate and these are separate. But the one piece makes it a lot easier. Now the RTV I'm gonna use is Permatech Ultra Gray and it's maximum torque. It's the best stuff I've ran into other than Honda Bond. Uh, so basically, we're going to take one of our gaskets, and you need the RTV basically underneath it right here. So on both sides. Kind of like that. 
and then do the same thing for the other one right here because this is a prone place to leak we got to do this to the valve cover and the cylinder head where it meets the cylinder head so basically what we'll be doing is we'll be putting it on this side also so for right now we got to put this on the intake or not the intake my bad the valve cover and we're just gonna flap this down like this and you want to line it up like that and then like that and the one piece if you look right here this really doesn't matter at all that's not what seals it so now you're just gonna start from the back and work your way in there and the one piece basically you're gonna have to snip out these two pieces right here so basically just come real close to the other one give it a snip as you can see I didn't cut the actual gasket and then just tuck it back down in there just like that I'll put both one piece and two pieces in my shopping cart so if you have it you can just order it but if you order the one piece at least you're guaranteed to get the whole package the one it also comes with the intake seals um, actually it doesn't come with the intake seals that came with the other gasket but it comes with all the grommet seals all these grommets we're gonna pull these out next and seal them off so you can't go wrong with the one piece or the two piece with the one piece you're gonna have to do what I did and just snip them out real close but other than that it comes out really nice and it kinda of makes it easy because it keeps it all together so right now I'm just gonna go ahead and clean all around follow this all the way around on both cams all the way around I'm gonna clean it up get a little plastic uh, putty knife or whatnot and scrape off the RTV you don't want to use anything metal because if you scratch it it won't seal properly so go ahead and do that and just get, get all the RTV off from the previous. So I have an AC squeegee and I'm just going to go like this. Pretty much just run it all the way down any kind of RTV. Just push it off. If, it, if you get some of the RTV in the cylinder head, don't be afraid. It's, it's not going to hurt it. It's just rubber. I mean, you don't want it in there, obviously, but if you do happen to accidentally get something in there, uh, don't worry about it. Try to get it out, but if you can't, you'll be okay. All right, so I'm gonna prep up this valve cover real quick. Pull this out on both sides right here. And I'm gonna RTV a little bit here on the corners, right here on the corners, because those are common places that leak. So I'll just put a little bit right here on the back, on the corner. So right there, same thing for this side. These are just right where a curve is, that's usually where you get leaks. Same thing with Hondas and all that where the cams kind of meet. And then we'll fill it up pretty good. You can do this on the head also. That's what we're going to do. We're just kind of filling out any gaps. I don't like leaks. I don't know about you. I wouldn't want to have to do the whole job and then have to do it all over again. And it may look a little messy, but I'll tell you what, it'll stop the leak. And if you just put it clean on there, eventually you're more than likely you're going to get a leak in this corner, even with a new one. I've seen it happen. So just uh, glob it up right here where it kind of curves in and out. Right there. And 
And there we go, that's good for that. Now we gotta go ahead and put a nice little glob right here. Just connect it. That should be good there and we'll do the same thing right here. That's just going to seal up so nothing gets in where the coil pack is and the spark plugs because you can get dirt and if it rains or any kind of water gets in there from splash you don't want it getting down in there. I'm going to go ahead and apply the RTV on the cylinder head real quick in the spots that I need to and then I'll show you. Alright this is where I applied the RTV. If you look right here, did it right through here on each corner of the cam. If you look, there's a glob there, a little glob there on this side and then on this side right here this is a tough spot to get to and then on the back over here if you look I started from here and I went all the way down under all the way here and all the way to the other cam and the corner so that's what you want to do you want to from this point all the way over 100 percent and then that's where it seals off right there I also have it on the valve cover but I didn't really trust it too much now for the little o-rings, all you do is just pop them out one by one. Just pull them out like that. Take the new one and press it in. I'm going to do this real quick because i got to get this RTV on there before it dries. So just take one out of the bag, push it over to the new spot. Just run it around in a circle until it stays. And that's it. Now you're going to take the valve cover. And you're going to gently... Try not to hit the RTV on anything. You want to get it lined up first. There we go. Make sure everything's out of the way. Now the torque specs for the valve cover bolts are 71 inch pound, which is roughly six foot pounds torque. Now when you're torquing these, start from the middle and work your way in an X pattern. One, two, three, four, just kind of exit as you're going and X your way out. And then it'll smooth out the gasket real nice and it'll be a good uh, torque. Now for the passenger side valve cover, it's the same exact procedure. You disconnect the coil pack. Got a few grommets here and it looks like we have a little bracket right here. Now the first step is go ahead and disconnect your battery. You're going to do the negative first, 8 millimeter, and then the positive. Because if you ever happen to touch the wrench to ground, it won't do nothing. But if you touch the positive to the ground, you're going to spark. So now that the negative is off, if we went ahead and touched this to the frame, it wouldn't do nothing. And we're going to go ahead and remove this. I believe it's 14 right here. And we're going to take the battery out. It'll make it a lot easier to get to the passenger side valve cover. So on the passenger side, basically you go ahead and disconnect this clip right here. You got a star bit right here. Uh, it looks like a 20. And then basically you got to move this heater pump. There's two, I think they're T30s. You got to take those off. And then down here underneath you got two uh, E10 star bits. And those are real difficult to get to. So you got to get in there and get those out. And then this whole shield will come off and you'll be able to gain access to the valve cover. Oh yeah, we got some oil and looks like we got a plug that came off. So we're going to have to grab that out of there. Here's another telltale that you had a bad valve cover gasket. Is there's really no other place that the oil can come from. If it ends up in your spark plugs like this, look at all that oil in there. That is a lot of oil. And then in this one, so what we'll do is put some rags in there and let it absorb the oil. Maybe hit it with a little bit of brake cleaner later. But if you look closely, right here on the edge, that's where the oil's coming from. So it's coming from the edge in here. And that's 100% guaranteed 
a bad valve cover gasket. Unless, obviously, you got a crack in the head and it's allowing it in there, but I don't see any cracks and this is just a indicator that you have a bad valve cover gasket. So just get it to a point so you can get it down where the spark plug is and let that sit there. You can even get a screwdriver and help shove it down in there. I'm just going to let that sit and I'm going to do that to the rest of them until I can get all that oil out of there. And you can sneak it out just like that and make sure to do the same thing you did on the driver's side to the passenger side and then we're going to reinstall it the same way. Make sure you pre-apply your RTV on the cylinder head in the places that you were supposed to on the other cylinder head. You saw how it was done. So now we're just going to line this one up. Try to sneak it right on in there without any problems. Line the back up. Now get all your bolts and torque it down to six foot pounds. Now we're going to go ahead and put the coils back on. Just make sure you put the right one on the right side. Uh, this one says uh, 246. 246 is the driver side. So we're just going to gently slide these in here. Make sure the gasket's on there right. Get them lined up with the spark plugs. The key is to get that gasket in there. Then just push down. And I would give them a torque of 5 to 7 foot pounds or 71 inch pounds. They're the same size bolts as the valve cover. They're a little bit longer, so maybe go with uh, five, 5 foot pounds instead of 6. Also, another key is if you don't know which coils which, with the OEM ones, if you look at the plug, the plug on this one is a whitish gray, and the plug on this one is black. And the end of the coil is whitish gray, so that'll tell you that it goes to that plug, and the coil on this side is black, it'll tell you it goes to that black plug. Now all we do is plug it in, you line it up. Just like that. Do the same thing for the passenger side. Now we're going to go ahead and install the lower intake and what you want to do is you want to clean these ports first. Try not to get any of the dirt in there. And you're going to torque this down to 15 foot pounds. So just slide it in there, get it lined up, get all the bolts in there and then X pattern it 15 foot pounds. So now we're going to put the intake runner up. Just make sure the bottom, go ahead and clean it up real quick. I'm going to go clean this real quick and then we're going to set it on there and we're going to torque that to 15 foot pounds. That's all cleaned up. Now we're going to basically just flip this around and we want to gently set it down, move everything out of the way. And you have to go down at an angle, like we did before. And there we go. Now just line it up with the holes. Right about there. And you're gonna probably wanna, you can plug this in. I'm gonna just plug it in right now, just so I don't forget. So go ahead and plug in the fuel injectors. Now we can take our bolts and get them started. Now the easiest way to put these bolts on is just stick the bolt on a magnet, extend it and then stick it straight down, tighten it and pull the magnet off. It'll get a couple threads, maybe one or two threads on there if they're clean. Then you don't run the risk of actually losing the bolts. So 15 foot-pounds on this one. On this back one, you're going to have to get a short extension because you won't get it with a longer one. Once you have them all torqued down to 15 foot pounds, you're going to take your new O rings, you're going to set them on top right there.
Now we're going to take our intake manifold and we're going to gently set this right here. You can, there's dowel pins to line everything up and bolt holes. So there we got everything lined up. Now we got a vacuum line underneath. We got this hose that runs to this hose right here. And we have this vacuum line right here that runs back to a actuator little nipple right here. We got our brake booster right here that we plug in right here. And a few other knickknacks over here that we got to put this mount on. We got to move this out real quick. There we go. And then we got to put that bolt back in where those two plugs go in. And that's pretty much it other than hooking the intake back up. And that's pretty much it. This goes, this is the overflow reservoir. This goes underneath right here. And then don't forget to plug in your two sensors right here, the cam sensors and your uh, throttle sensor. Now take your E12 and we're going to torque these in an X pattern. 17 foot pounds. So get it on there. There's 17. Do the same thing to this one. 17. That's it. So basically all we gotta do is put the power steering reservoir, hook that back up, put that bolt in there, tighten these intakes on there, plug in the throttle plug, the control, and then hook our battery up, plug these two modules back in, the sensor right here, make sure this is bolted in correctly, and that's it. Just uh, little tedious things.